Hi folks, it's Tracy here, otherwise known as Legs. I'm doing my first Share School video and I thought it might be quite useful to show you some of the procedures that I do when I'm doing a portrait. They're very basic, you may know about them already and if you do then I apologise for the duplication but for those of you that don't know about these um, procedures I hope you find them useful. So here we are this is a portrait of yours truly. Now on first glance you might think there's not an awful lot that you know is obviously in need of retouching but if we zoom in a little bit closer we'll see they're getting a bit scary now you can see there are a few things you know I have my Joe 90 puppet line here I've got my delightful frown lines and uh, my wonderful forehead lines up here. Now I have to tell you this portrait was under good light so they don't look as bad as they actually are and let me tell you they are a lot worse in the flesh. Anyway, before I start what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my background layer. I'm going to use a shortcut here and that's by pressing the command or the control and J key. There you are if you see down here on the right that we've got a duplicate copy of the background. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this Joe 90 puppet line here. To do this, I'm going to use the spot healing brush, which is over here on the left hand side. So if you click, you will see you will get a whole lot of brushes come up. I'm going to use this one here. That's called the spot healing brush tool. This will make your cursor into a circle. Now you can make your cursor or the size of your brush, as this is, larger or smaller by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. So that's the right bracket making it larger, the left bracket making it smaller. This makes it a lot easier than actually having to go up into file and um, into, sorry I beg your pardon, up into the brush area and then making it larger or smaller via this method. So, right. Now I tend to work on smaller areas because if you enlarge in your brush like so and you start doing some healing you'll tend to find that you're bringing details from the areas that you don't wish to get involved. So I'll bring the brush back down. So what we want to do then is just paint over this line. So there we go, gently does it. And voila, that's it gone. So I'll come up onto my frown lines. You don't have to be in an exact straight line. I'm doing this on a MacBook, um, on a trackpad, so it's not the easiest to use. I miss my Wacom. I'll have you back soon, baby, I promise. So here we go. I'm just getting rid of some of my frown lines and then on to my forehead lines. This is far cheaper than Botox, you know. Here we go. There we are. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm happy enough that I've got rid of enough lines on there. Another thing I tend to do is I like to lighten shadows underneath eyes. Now, an easy way to do that, or one of the easy ways to do that, uh, is to go to the clone tool. Now, I like to uh, use the lighten mode for this and reduce your opacity down. You can play around with this, it just depends. You know, I've got mine at 54% at the moment. Um, and what you want to do is by using the Alt key, press the Alt key down and you see how the cursor changes to this sort of crossfire. Okay? So, with the Alt key pressed down, click on a lighter area or a smoother area, preferably lighter, on the face. There we are. And that's defined the source. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to lower my, I'm going to reduce the brush size down a little bit and I'm just going to paint over the dark area. Okay, we'll alt click again and there we go. Now you can do this, you can raise the opacity a bit more, you can play around and again we'll do the same on the other side. Click on the smooth area, there we go, alt click again. I like to do it in stages uh, rather than have it, you know, all in one go. Uh, I think it's better if you do things gradually and just work them up and see how they look. Right, I think that's that's pretty okay for that. So now, 
just to show you what the image looked like before, if I go back over here onto my layers palette here, if I unclick my work that I've just done, there we go, you see, if I come down, and reduce that down. There's another shortcut for you, by the way. If you're in the magnifying tool here and you want to reduce the size of your picture, press the Alt key and you'll see that the cursor goes to a minus and then it'll go to a plus if you release. The plus will obviously make it bigger. Press the Alt key again and that will make it smaller. See? Okay. So, that was what I began with and that was the after. I know there are only subtle changes but I do think that they make a difference and I think the thing is as well to remember I, do, I wouldn't want to overdo any of the retouching. I, I have left some lines in you know, I've left a few down here and, and I haven't made the shadows completely go away. I think you tend to run into it looking a little bit flat if you overdo retouching. But anyway, I think that's all for now. Uh, one more show. There you go, me and all my glory. And there we are. You see now my secret's out now. So you all know what I Photoshop out in uh, any of my portraits that you see of me. So at least you're prepared that when you see me in the flesh that you, that you know really I am scary. Okay, folks, I hope this has been uh, helpful to you. If there's anything else that you, you know, want to know or that I can help you with in Photoshop, then uh, I'm more than happy to give a go or try and do a little tutorial. I'm by no means an expert. Uh, I'm totally self-taught, so I'm sure there are people out there who could teach me an awful lot more. But I'm more than happy to help out if there's anything or any questions, so shoot them over to me. Thanks ever so much. Bye now.